when it gets to January, that's usually a, the month of the year when I just really start looking forward to the coming months and all the matches that we've got lined up for that year. Let's face it, in January the fishing generally isn't too fantastic and with the exception of the usual winter leagues, I just kind of slow down a little bit with matches and just start looking at the types of kit that I'm going to be needing for the competitions that we've got coming up later on in the year. And that's also when we start looking at our tattle, doing a little bit more prep, just kind of getting ready for those events with the long dark nights. It's great to just kind of step back from the actual getting out there fishing all the time and just get your kit ready for, you know, for the events that you are inevitably really, really looking forward to. And that's when we start getting asked loads and loads of questions about how we actually prepare our kit. Now, one of the key things that we obviously prepare are our hook lengths. And I'm obviously predominantly a feeder angler. And I've just kind of learned over the last 10 years what kind of um, hook lengths um, styles I actually use on the venues that I fish. Now there are two real categories for my hook lens. One are the hook lens that I actually carry with me all the time and that is basically those three boxes clearly labelled. I've got one that's the smaller box that's for my method feeder hook lens. I've then got another case there which is for the barbless pattern hooks and I fish a variety of venues and lots of the venues I fish allowed barbed hooks as well and that is it that is all I carry I carry those in my uh, seat box I'm using the XR36 compact seat box now and two of those side by side go in the base unit the shallow base unit on that box and that is it I can forget about them they're in there they're out of the where um, out of the weather and I just know that I've always got um, a good selection of barbed and barbless hooks with me and that one I actually just keep in my single side drawer and that is it they're the hook lens that I carry with me now the other sets of hook lens that I actually have with me are the ones that I would refer to as specialized hook lens and they really fall into two categories one um, is the kind of hook lens that we tend to use in Ireland so they tend to be you know up to lengths of one and a half meters a little bit more robust you know so they could be on 019 020 type diameter hook lens and they are with bigger hooks as well you know anything up to a size 10 they're a little bit more specialized to what we actually use when we're in Ireland and I actually keep them in, in a box on their own that I can just take in put into my kit and take out as and when I need it and obviously when I go away to Ireland on festivals or those sorts of venues I can just put those in so I know I've got them all ready ready to go when we get over there and the other hook lens are the really specialized ones that we tend to use when we're fishing on rivers for barbel and th you know fish like that and I tend to keep these obviously I've got a good um, store a good stock of them that I've built up over the years um, when I've been preparing for certain events and I leave these at home really I only, only take these as you can see there's loads of spools in there and they you know when we're targeting fish like barbel which is a prime example we're on rivers and there might be longer hook lengths some of these are up to two meters long and they are again thick diameter uh, hook lengths with bigger hooks as well but really really strong hooks ones that we wouldn't normally use in our day-to-day -day, uh, feeder fishing so they're the categories of the hook lengths that I actually have in my tattle room and what I actually carry with me now lots of people ask me about the kind of permutations of the hook lens that I tie up in preparation for these events now I am a massive believer in keeping things simple wherever possible and I've tried carrying the hook lens of all different lengths all different diameters all different permutations but over the course of the last 10 years we've obviously found just by fishing the same venues year in year out we know what style of fishing we're doing and I only really carry hook lens for when I'm fishing here in England in the UK uh, of two lengths and that is 50 centimeters and one meter and that is it so all these all of these spools in here are made up on either I always have one with 50 centimeter hook lens on and one with a meter if I do obviously decide I want a one meter hook length to be a little bit shorter I can cut it down it really is that simple you know and on my side tray I've got a little nick a little mark on my side tray which is marked off at 25 centimeters so that I can quickly and easily just cut down a hook length um, to suit so say for example I wanted 75 centimeter hook length I could put a one meter um, get a one meter hook length out of there and just 
uh, cut it back by 25 centimeters and that's it it's just it just means that everything you're carrying is a, a little bit more simpler um, and it means that you haven't got loads and loads of different permutations of kit because like I say over the last 10 years we've generally found that we're fishing a lot of the venues that are the same year in year out and we know what kind of kit we need on them so that just helps narrow down a lot of these options now I'm a massive believer in keeping things simple but I'm a big believer in keeping things as organized as you possibly can so a hook length case like this one as you can see it's clearly marked with barbed so I know that they're all my barbed hooks in there all the patterns that I tend to use and I always put them in here in the same system all right now this might sound a little bit OCD but it's just one way I decided to do it so that now when I go to this box I know roughly where every spool is so I basically start off with the lighter ones down here so when I open the box up the lighter ones here so these are, are the size 16 and 18 hooks it's very in fact I never go below a size 18 hook now when I'm feeder fishing anyway so they're the smallest ones that I've got tied up here so we've got 16s 18s here 16s uh, and then we go up to 14s 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 and then the, and then we go over to here these are 14s on stronger line and then we gradually work our way up to 12s and then there's a couple of size 10s up there as well. So I know that when I open that box up, I know roughly where the hook length is gonna be that I'm actually after. Because let's face it, whenever you're putting a hook length on, it's in my opinion, you're generally in a rush, you know? If you've got to change a hook length in a session, it's you generally wanna do it as quickly and easily as possible. That's partly why you've already got them tied up anyway to speed up that process on the bank. But it, you know, it might mean you've just lost a fish, and if you've just lost a fish, you cannot wait to get a hook length back on. Uh, and if you've just, you know, been cut off or or you're changing your hook length because it's not working because you you're either scaling the hook down or up, um, then again, time is uh, a massive issue. So just by staying a little bit organised like that, it just it's just going to speed up the process of you getting to your hook lens. And that's why I keep them in that base unit underneath my um, underneath the, the drawer of my box. It means that sometimes you might be sat out in the water, sometimes it can be very, very muddy, so you don't want your luggage around you. Your luggage might be up the bank. It just means I'm obviously always going to be sitting on my seat box. It means that even if I am right out in the water or on a platform, I know that all those hook lengths are right here under the seat of my box so I can just lift it up and get to them really nice and easy. I'm sure we've all done it, you know, you might have had these in a different bag or something like that and you've got out there on your platform and all of a sudden you think, oh, my hook lengths are back there. So that might stop you from making that change or just slow you down. So by keeping them all in one place, all the time, I just know exactly where they are. So in these boxes, everything's either 50 centimeters or a meter, and my method feeder hook lengths are all four inches. That is generally a fishery rule on most fisheries, you know, a minimum of four inches long. There are exceptions to that rule that some venues do allow you to use shorter method feeder hook lengths than four inch. I don't fish many of those venues, if any, to be honest, and I just think four inches are a nice length anyway to be using. So I carry all my method feeder hook lengths all on four inch long hook lengths. Now as regards the actual patterns of the hooks that I tie up, it really is quite simple now in my feeder fishing. There are really four patterns mainly that I'm using for my feeder fishing. Two of those are barbless hooks and two are barbed. Now the first one is the MXB3 and that's a hook that I've used so much. I've used that hook pattern more than any other pattern so far that's out of the new range from Matrix and that's because it's a, it's a lovely wide gape hook and it's one that really fits in with a lot of the feeder fishing that I'm doing. It is a barbed hook and that's allowed on lots of the venues that I fish but it, because it's wide gape it's a great hook for, for when you're fishing for bream, if you're fishing with worms and slightly bigger baits and it's also a really really strong hook as well. The other pattern that I've been using on those same venues is the MXB2 it's a slightly smaller gape, so it's not as wide. So that, whilst it is a finer wire gauge hook, it is really, really strong. And it's that one is just more suited to when you're fishing with maggots and pinkies and that sort of thing. So, you know, when I'm fishing with lighter baits like that, I'll use the MXB2. But when I'm fishing with chunkier, bigger baits for bigger fish, then I absolutely love the MXB3. As regards barbless patterns, I love the MXC1. That's the one I've used more than anything um, on the venues where barbless hooks have got to be used. And that's quite, um, it's a medium gauge hook. Uh, very, very strong. I've landed some big fish on, on that hook. But that's ideal for when you're fishing. Certainly at this time of year, you know, through winter, when you're fishing with single and double maggot, or you might be fishing pinkies. So that's my number one go-to barbless hook pattern. And then the only other barbless hook pattern that I've been using recently is the 
MXC3, which is a thicker gauge hook, and that's one that I use when I'm targeting bigger fish with bigger baits. And those four patterns really feature in probably 19 to 95% of all the hooks I've got tied up in these boxes. Those nice simple four patterns cover most of my fishing. Now as regards actually storing the hook lens, I see lots of people putting lots of time and effort and love and care into creating all these hook lens because obviously you want to be nicely prepared for when you do actually get out on the bank side. Um, but one of the things that I see a lot of people doing is just rushing to put them on the spools. Now these are EVA spools and there are loads and loads of spools out there on the market. We've seen them all various different diameters, different sizes, different colours. However, there are some out there, there are some EVA spools which are a little bit harder than others. Now I find this out you know, the hard way a few years ago that some of the EVA that you see out there is a little bit denser and a little bit tougher. And if you are going to be putting your hook into these spools to store them, then that's something you really need to think about. You know, I found this out the hard way because, you know, many years ago I was using spools similar to these. Uh, and the EVA was much denser and, and I just wasn't storing them properly. I was putting the hooks onto these foam spools, just pushing the hook right in so that it didn't come off because the last thing I wanted to do was to obviously open a box like this and have the hook length all over the place. And I've seen it done many, many times. However, whilst these are incredibly sharp hooks, that's why I use them, I'm a massive believer that you know, in, in every aspect of your fishing, I think you really, really need to stack as many odds in your favour as possible. Now for me, whilst these hooks are incredibly sharp out of the packet, you know, like I say, I'm using these for all my fishing now, that's how much confidence I've got in these. Every single time you use that hook, you run the risk of it not being quite as sharp as what it is when you take it out of the packet. It's just inevitable. Every single hook pattern out there, and I'm sure you've had it, you might be fishing away, you might have caught 20, 30, 40, 100 fish, and all of a sudden you'll start trying to put your hook bait on and the maggot, for example, might be bursting or whatever. And that's just purely because the, the hook has been used so much that it, it's starting to go a little bit blunter. So that is obviously when we need to change the hook. It happens with every single pattern of hook. Now, I want these hooks when I'm using them, when I get out there on the bank, I want that hook point to be as sharp as it possibly can be. And if you're not sure about that, one of the best ways of just finding out how sharp your hook is, is just simply hook a maggot or a pinky. You know, that is one of the simplest ways of doing it because that will tell you how sharp it is. All right, because if it's not sharp, it's going to burst or it's just not going to go into the bait very well. And if that's the case, just don't even take the chance, just change it. All right, but what I see a lot of people doing is, and this can be a massive problem with barbed hooks, is that when you get your spools like this, you've tied your hook length, and I see people pushing the hook point into the spool or into the foam so that it doesn't come off. Now, in my opinion, and I've seen this, you know, I have tried this out before, and it does depend on the hook pattern that you're using. Certainly, finer wire gauge hooks can damage a lot easier than thicker gauge hooks, so that's something you need to think about. But I don't push the point of the hook right into the foam of the spool because I believe that every time that, that hook is getting used, whether that being getting pushed into an EVA spool or pushed into a fish's mouth, you run the risk of it not being as sharp as what it is. So the last thing I want to do is push certainly a barbed hook into a foam spool like this, so that when I get to the bank and I take it off the spool to use it, the last thing I want to do is risk that point not being as sharp as it possibly could be. And the other point is, if you're using a barbed hook, lots of people push these um, hooks right into the foam, past the barb as well. And I've seen it, and I've had it happen to myself before years ago, is that when you take that hook out, it actually damages the barb as well, because it's been used, you know. So what I do is I, I just lay the actual hooks onto the side of the spool. All right, I, ju I just don't see any point, they don't tangle that way, and it just means that when I get to the bank and I put that hook length on for the first time, it means that that hook point is exactly as fresh and as sharp as what it is when it came out of the packet. Now, as regards actually tying the hooks, I've always used a, a hook tire, just a matchman hook tire. I've used that for the last 30 years, and I don't see any reason to change. I put six whippings around the shank of the hook, I just find that any more than that is unnecessary and will add a little bit of extra weight to the hook, but any less than that, it's not quite as strong. So I just put six whippings on and I just don't have any break on me whatsoever. So that's the way I tie the hooks on, but I also make sure that the hook point is turning in. 
Now this is something that a lot of people talk about, certainly in hair rigging, um, where you know you just want to try and enhance the chance of you hooking a fish. And I just find that having it so that the hook point is turning in, so the line is actually coming round towards the inside of the hook. I just find you know I just hook fish far better that way. So that's just a case of you know it depends on what kind of hook tire you're using, but just have a think about the way that you're positioning the hook in the hook tire because that will have a you know an outcome as regards which side the actual line comes off the knot actually on the shank and the other thing that i do is i just don't tend to tie hook lengths up um too far in advance you know it, it's just a, a confidence thing with me you know i i love to have a nice fresh stock off hooks so i never sit down and tie up 500 to keep me going for the next two years i just don't do that you know it's a bit of a confidence thing I'm sure the lines that I'm using now, and certainly obviously the hooks as well, they're gonna stay in the same condition. But it's just a confidence thing. I want them to be to be fresh, I want the knots to be fresh, and so I don't do too many in advance. You know, if I've got a match coming up at the weekend, I'll make sure I've got enough coming up for that match uh, and just tie them up the week before or a few days before. But uh, there are certain hook lengths like on thicker diameters that you know I think you can time up months and months in advance but I just don't overcomplicate things I keep it nice and simple and the other thing that I do at the same time whilst I'm um, tying up my hook lengths is I tie up my shot leaders as well I always carry these are what I would refer to as my emergency shot leaders and these actually fit underneath the seat uh, of the of the seat box all right that's a nice shallow tray and that goes underneath the seat on my seat box again because if i'm sat out in the water i can get access to these and when i say these are emergency shot leaders these are basically leaders that are ready tied i've got half of these that are tied up with three running rigs and the other half are on helicopter rigs and these are for when i'm, I'm faced with really snaggy places you know sometimes certainly the venues in Ireland or lots of natural venues might be snaggy you are if you fish those venues you are going to come across um, places that can be a little bit snaggy it could be shelves and rocks that you're tackling these are all tied up on 10 pound line and they are for those occasions so that if I do lose a rig and I'm in the middle of a match um, if I lose a leader then I can just quickly cut the line where the leader attaches to the braid and these are all exactly five meters long so I know that um, if I cut the or I take the leader off at the knot or the leader knot um, on my rig it means that because they're all five meters long I can put one of those on straight away and I know I'm fishing exactly the same range it just means that I haven't got to get off my box and start going back to the sticks and re-clip them up again uh, and having to tie shot leaders so I do those at the same time as my hook lengths I just honestly think that January is a great month for getting this sort of thing you know together because you tend to be looking at the matches that you've got coming up for the year and that will tell you what kind of hooks and hook lengths that you're going to be needing so I hope this has helped shed a little bit of light on it I know lots of people have been asking questions about prep over the last few weeks now that they're spending much more time at home and let's face it we always feel a lot more prepared and a lot more confident when we've got kit with us that we know are going to cover most of the eventualities we might be faced with when we finally get back out there on the bank i hope you've enjoyed this bit of an insight if you have please give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe so thanks for watching and i look forward to seeing you in the next video